Welcome back guys, 27 months here, back with another video for you today. As you can see from the description, yes, I built this, this phenomenal storage solution. Man, look at this thing of beauty. 15 feet by 9 feet. Yes, you heard it right. 15 by 9 feet of storage. Pretty much almost floating. Everything is safely secured. I'm gonna show you how I did it. I've seen a bunch of videos out there. Nobody actually shows how you connect everything together, especially up in the rafters. I got you right there, so I'm gonna show you how I did it. Also, some tips and tricks. A reminder, every garage is different. Every rafter is different. So, just to give you an idea, I can stand below it. And there's no post. That's what I'm, I was very excited about. It's something that you don't see every day. So, without further ado, let's jump into the video. We're gonna use half inch thick plywood for the for this project. I have here some three by two studs that we're gonna use for the framing. And then in the rafters where I'm gonna show you, we'll use four by four inches by three feet. These are supporting blocks. And then we're gonna use the three eight rod. Also we got the three eight washers, three eight lock nuts. These are goes the same. And we got three inch screws, deck made for hardwood projects and just blue tape few things i had to use a circular saw here i don't own a table saw i'm not a carpenter i'm just a handyman so every two feet or every 24 inches i'll be using these supporting um, two by threes on the long two by threes to create the base so what's gonna do i'm gonna pre-drill these holes two for each and then I'm going to mount them and put a backmate screw in it, so it should give them a nice support. So let's start drilling. We're going to do that on this whole 2x3 piece. Now that we got all the screws preset, let's start mounting the base. Last one. Perfect. Now that we got the first frame placed, we're gonna uh, build a few more off camera and then we'll get going with the project. Same technique as pre-drilling the two by threes to precision the screw. I did the same thing. Obviously, every screw is positioned where the stud is on the wall so you want to make sure you have everything marked correctly then it will give you the support on each and every area I'm gonna show you guys how to find the studs behind the sheetrock you're gonna use a stud finder you're gonna place it on the sheetrock hit the button and then you drag it keep going as soon as it gets red means that's where the stud begins then you go on the opposite side hit the button and you keep dragging it again and it's turning red right there so from here to here that's where the stud is inside the wall if you measure it if they use everything correctly it should be a two inches stud and then going towards the inside will be four inches so two by four which is used on structures so here we're gonna connect all the frames so we can connect it completely here. My wife did a wonderful job of finding all these studs and she painted or she marked them already. So made my life easier today. 
So let's do this. Look how nice and leveled everything is. Whee! I use these two clamps to connect the bases together. I'm gonna zoom in, look at the water level, nice in the center. Every screw is pretty much dead center in the stud. So that's where we're gonna push them in. I'm using these plywoods right now as support. It happens to be the same length that I'm just gonna cover afterwards. And if you look close, we're leveled. That's what we need. So right now, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna drill a hole through this uh, two by three, going up and then one going straight to the attic. And that's where we're gonna connect the rods up there um, in the rafters. So, let's get started. That's where the thread rod will go in, but before we do that, I'm gonna make this hole bigger, because I need it to be 3.8, and this is definitely not 3.8. Grab the 3.8 bit, and make this hole smaller. Adding rod through the hole you just made. Then grab your water level. Try to get it as straight as possible. Right there. And that's where you're gonna mark the ceiling. Make sure it's good. Yep. The ceiling is smart. That's where we're gonna drill the hole. I've already checked if I have any studs. It's right here and nothing on this side, so I'm clear to do the hole right here, which I'm gonna do now. And that's where we're gonna connect to the rafter. Before you connect the rod and put it under pressure inside of the hole of the ceiling, you wanna make sure you create a hole on the plywood that you're gonna use on the shelf because you can't put enough pressure right now going down on the shelf itself because the shelf itself is not secure yet. Until you put the thread rod secure, after that you can put some pressure on the plywood itself. So right now, I use these clamps to simulate where the plywood would go and through the same hole that we have here I'm gonna connect it through the plywood on top. I put the tape here so to avoid any breakups, anything that can happen from the drilling, obviously from the bottom going up. From the bottom going up you want to put gentle pressure, not too much. Now you're gonna go from the top towards the bottom because the hole has already been created. Perfect. Now you'll be connecting the threading rod all the way up. Keep going up towards the hole. Eventually right here, you're gonna leave this amount of space. This whole locking nut will be hidden inside of the hole that we created right there. Towards the end, another plywood will connect on the bottom and you won't even see any hole or anything, just like this. Look how nice it's turned out. So now we're gonna connect the top and then afterward, we're gonna check if on the bottom we need to give it any extra torque. See you in a bit. Okay, 
Here we got everything that you need to know inside of the rafters. Obviously everybody's rafter will be different. Mine, I didn't have enough space to put this bar on top of the rafters. So I got these clamps from Home Depot. It basically, it's two screws on this side and two screws on the other side. Holds the beam pretty much in place. It has a specific hole here on the side, which I'm gonna drill in here with a nail once everything is secure. You wanna measure out and make sure everything is connecting through the rod all the way on top. And now you're gonna put some spacers here, put a lock nut, put everything in place and put them secure. You're gonna hold it steady with the vice grip and then you can pretty much put the lock nut in place. Okay guys, it's been a long but productive day. Behind me you guys can see that we got the left side built already. Now we're gonna finish this part. Perfect, that's it. See you tomorrow. Once you have all these plywoods pre-cut, clamp them just to make sure all the plywoods are into the correct position. They have very little wiggle room because remember we have all these rods holding them either way into position still and then you can either option to screw them in or use a nail gun. I'm going for a nail gun, it's much faster. I can get this done in about 15 minutes maybe. So let's take a look. Off camera, after the sanding part, I painted the bottom part of the shelf gray, matching the wall. Okay hey guys, here you can see the aftermath. The further one is the one I showed you on the video, which is the longest one. Obviously, I learned my lesson. I trimmed or cut the um, rod a little bit shorter, so I didn't have that much of a gap on top unnecessarily so as you learn and adapt as you go you can maybe see the nails down there those nails are kind of halfway in it here you can see the other two rods that connects on the 15 feet piece of the shelf i uh, used one actually one four by four to connect both rods in it this beam is thick enough and it, it will and can support way more than this. After this one, the last one would have been all the way down there in the back, which was crazy unsafe. This one was crazy enough. These two were easier, but I found a different solution to, you to do to the one all the way in the back. I'm gonna show you. The entrance to the attic is right there which is actually obviously 15 feet away. Going through the rafter in a tight space, dark and very unsafe, to get one last rod going here to the top, I was actually about to cut the sheet rock and connect it and obviously patch it back when I found this. I mean, in my opinion, it's a very smart idea to make usage of this garage thing which is connected to one of the rods. And guess what? Look at this. I went and got all the brackets that the Home Depot had, and this is the one that fitted the best. Obviously, two um, screws holding over there, and then I have a lock, a lock nut, and a bolt going over there. So guess what? This thing is so solid, it's not going anywhere. So look at this nice thing of beauty. If you everything turned out pretty good. It was a long 3D project, not gonna lie to you, it takes a lot of you. You can actually do it over a week time, I guess, working at night, but I had a nice three days off, so I had the chance to do it. Thanks to my wife for supporting me with everything I do, all this crazy YouTube stuff, and there's no way you can do this project on your own. Safety first, holding everything, 
he did a phenomenal job of helping me paint and all the support out there also into the rafter shining the light and make sure i wasn't stepping on any uh, weak areas up there besides that um, one other thing i want to ask you guys let me know in the comment what should i do with these floors because they're looking horrible right now so that will be one of my future projects so let me know what you think what will match my nice black and red interior with some obviously great and white stones i had these this toolbox and this workbench for a while now but they never looked so good in this finished garage so let me know please thank you very much for watching part two of my garage restoration you can always click on part one i'm gonna put the link right here also if it's the first time watching one of my videos all my channel is about is cars and garage and a little bit of the scene in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So if you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos, drop a like button and comment down below. Let me know what you think and I'll catch you in the next one. I'll Tapped in lately, my left had a fast man, but it's ass plan. Fight for my life with the brass hands, and I still ball with a bad hand. Got an aerial point of view, but they'll never see the big picture through zoom lens. From the quicksand, make it push start, type of bands cool with the tent plan. I'm back on my bend the rules for the kicks. They quick to give it.